What's up guys? Quick one, quick video. Welcome uh, back to the channel. I'm not doing a full official video this time. I'm just going to show you some uh, couple of the mods that I'm doing currently. So, first of all, dechlorinator filter. Simple, yet effective. How much was that? Uh, 25? About 25 quid off Amazon works an absolute treat now for those that you for those of you that have a multi-bay pump filter they're good but they can also be a pain in the arse so what I've decided to do is make a few adjustments to this one um, I was going to change it out and I was going I was going to uh, put a drum filter in, but the price of them is stupid money. Next in line was a Nexus um, K1 moving bed filter. Too much money. Um, so what I've decided to do is have a quick play around with this filter and see what we can do. So at the moment, biological media. I'll just flip the camera around. I just flip the camera around. I can't flip it around. So biological media, but what we tend to find is you get a lot of crap on top of that, like all gunge and everything goes straight on top of it and uh, clogs up quite quickly. So what I'm trying to do is stop it. So I did originally have a couple of sponge filters um, just sitting on top of it sponge filters were taking off a lot of the stuff but it was still building up and weren't doing it in mint. Um, I tried the sponge filters in the second chamber, technically the third chamber but the second away from the biological and that was reducing the, the flow rate going into the biological media so then the pump was quite often running dry. So what I did instead is I've now moved the filter because it comes in the first chamber and goes straight in and over so any fish that come through can sit in there and the reason for that is because you don't want to trap your fish in some poxy little filter which fish do come across especially the small ones and you don't want them dying so they've got somewhere to swim scoop them out with the net, chuck them back in the pond. So obviously second of all, the water comes straight through there. So the first thing you want is the brushes. Now I was going to just pack this chamber out with brushes and I'm undecided yet um, whether to do it or not. So I've done one chain of brushes, just put them on there with a little um, uh, poo plunger kit. And I've put uh, a crate on top, uh, sorry, underneath, and there's a there's a, another one right at the bottom. So I've got a sponge between it, two layers of sponge you had over the biological on top. I've now got one underneath. Pond needs filling up as well. I'll do that in a minute. Um, so I've got them underneath. So hopefully it goes through the brushes, through into the um, the the sponge filters, more mechanical media basically. Um, into there but allowing more flow through into the next chamber as it comes underneath and then I had a re I took all this out last year because it was just giving me a really hard time and I don't like it I can't stand the stuff um, but quite frankly it does do a quite good job of getting rid of some of the smaller stuff so what we decided to do is instead of um, throwing it away or giving it away kept it to one side and come up with an idea. I've just put this net in, so now that sits inside the net, hopefully it's the last bit of the water will come through there, inside through them uh, tubes, just these little plastic corrugated tubes and uh, some other kind of crap. Yes, it does um, get some biological bacteria in there 
but we're not bothered about killing it because we've got so much in the last chamber anyway but by having that inside the last chamber hopefully that's going to take out a lot of the crap that keeps coming into this last chamber and it's really hard to take it out so by putting it in the net it's now in a big fish net where you can just pull it out literally lift it up put it onto um, uh, you know a couple of uh, uh, trays we'll get the missus to hold it and then jet wash it inside and out mix it all up dunk it in a bucket give it a good wash put it in the bathtub rinse it off, off with hot water just anything really um, to, to clean it and then obviously trying to get less into the biological media because that stuff is a pain to clean and you can only clean that with pond water because otherwise you'll lose your biological media and I am going to do another video on this because people are still asking me although I'm not an expert people still ask me how does a pond filter work why is it important to have mechanical media as well as biological media and why is it only important to have biological media washed out and cleaned with pond water and to touch base on it quite quickly is by washing it off with jet wash or anything like that you'll just kill the biological media that you need for the nitrogen cycle process but I will touch base on a different video of that um, but for now I'm just showing you the setup now I did make a couple of comments on another video um, about the uh, the filter actually that filter there so that filter there was um, terrible within the first month it blew the capacitor I changed the capacitor and then it still wouldn't kick in the motor every time the electric stripped you have to spin it to get it going which was a nightmare and then just after the tw well they wouldn't change it for whatever reason Amazon and all pond solutions were arguing a toss with each other and basically Charles yeah. um, I was getting blamed uh, sorry I was getting sent to one place they weren't taking the blame for it I was sent it over to the another one they weren't taking the blame for it trying to argue the toss between Amazon and all pond solutions was a nightmare so we thought we'll uh, go with the second option and not bother again but unfortunately 12 months have passed and the pond filter decided to completely go the HZS 370 and if you look at the other video of the installation of it it's a, a decent filter but it's nowhere near as good as what it should be or claims to be um, easy access for cleaning yeah noisy yes very high in electricity definitely probably about a quid a day um, and overall not my cup of tea uh, no very flow on there really big and bulky as well which I don't really mind the big and bulkiness to it um, but it's unnecessary and I will be changing it out won't recommend it unless the um, come across to me and take liability for the other one that's just sitting there now it's burnt out 160 quid a time as well these they're not exactly cheap pumps so I will be uh, changing that out but anyway um, so there's the uh, the filter system now and then hopefully that'll work a bit better work a nice little tree to keep the water cleaner um, you don't need to go too far down there, Charles. Um, got the missus on the uh, on the house digging out. What we're going to do here is just that piece of concrete. Instead of taking it out, we're just going to slab around it so it becomes all the same level and move the shed over um, or build another shed. So then we can have room for. Um, something else to do with that or to be revealed so you'll have to uh, like, subscribe, comment and uh, keep an eye out for the next video for the future
here is where we're dumping all the soil. We've just raised that a little bit. So we've got a nice sitting area for the uh, something else all to be revealed. And then last not but last but not least, um, I'm playing around with um, the, uh, the UV. Now with the UV on my system, it's completely separate, it's on its own independent pump. The reason, excuse me, the reason it's on its own independent pump is because I like my UV filter at a different flow rate, much slower than the flow rate that the pump does. Some say that's not the right thing to do. Some say you need to put it before your filter, before it goes into your filter, and some say it needs to come on the outside of the filter, returning to the pump. I say work out your flow rate to the litres of pond that you've got, see how many litres per hour of a pond pump you need for the filter, and then work out if you need the same pump the same flow rate um, in UV. If you have got the same flow rate, then go ahead and install it if you want to on the pond pump and the on the pond filter, either before or after. To be fair, it probably won't make a difference. However, what will make a difference is trial and error to find out the best solution for your pond so if your UV goes before it and you get better results keep it before it if it goes after it and you get better results keep it after it some say it can affect the biological media by going before it some say it needs to be before it so it's already clean before it gets to the biological media so there's um, plenty of stories there um, and I probably will do a video as well on on that um, at some point, but as I say, I'm no expert, but I like to trial and test my own stuff and get the best results for my pond. And I've got happy toy, so I must be doing something right. But that feature there is just the UV, and at the moment, I'm playing around with that. I'm going to make it slightly different. That's just a bit of a prototype if you saw the post earlier on the Facebook page, Clean World. So, um, <laughs> look at the size of the mouth. Yep, happy story. Very happy story. And um, yeah, so when I've uh, made a bit more improvements, I'll keep you posted, I'll keep you updated. Um, if you've got any questions, anything you want to know more, uh, unless it's a question about expertise, advice and opinions, I can do a bit of research for you, but um, feel free to post on the Facebook page. There's uh, many Japanese and Malaysian koi breeders on there, full of information. If their English is bad, then just go on Google Translate and uh, speak to the guys. Uh, some people are very useful. Uh, thanks for watching this one. Hope you stay tuned. Happy Father's Day and happy food. Till next time.